Hi, good morning all. Uh, in today's tech talk, I'll be talking about atomic design, IT CSS file structure, and VM methodologies. So these, uh, I've been introducing all of these three technologies uh, and on how we can implement them in our code bases when we are developing uh, applications. So these are three different uh, methodologies, and we'll be merging them as well. Starting with atomic design. So, like the name suggests, with the name atomic, we will be starting from an atomic layer when we are developing our UI screens and we'll be having atoms, molecules, organisms, templates and pages. You might have a question as in what is atomic design? So by definition, it is de a design structure of deconstructing the layers into specific atoms, so which would be the basic building blocks of matter. For example, you might have seen in a, a UI, you might have uh, certain typographies like uh, there might be a bold text, there might be a gray text, a placeholder, you might have various icons, uh, different type button styles and different buttons, you might have different uh, text styles, font sizes, sometimes even different font families. So that's the atomic uh, layer that we have, where we create icons, the labels and uh, the basic uh, styles separately in an atomic level. Using these atoms, we bond them to create molecules, which are the smallest components within a UI page. So, for example, you can see in the image that I have attached to your right, you have atoms like the accordion, you have atoms like the checkbox, the button. So, these are atoms that have been bonded together to create the filtering module. So, that is one section of uh, the UI page, uh, one, one uh, component, and that's the molecule that we have created by various atoms. Using those atoms, we create organisms, which are once again uh, molecules that have been grouped together. But this time we will be developing more standalone components, which would be a bit more complex than the molecule. For example, once again, to the image that I have attached to the right, you have the card molecule and the pagination molecule. And in the card molecule, you have the pay, uh, paywall icon, the image, the article header, which are the atoms within that molecule. And together we have created the article list organism. So you can see even in uh, the image, the article list is a standalone component. Just by looking at the component, you know what the page is about. So that is the organism level or the layer. And once we have developed the atoms, the molecules and the organisms that we need, we would create the templates and the pages. And by uh, templates, we refer to the HTML structure, which would be the skeleton layout. So where you want the molecule to be placed, where you want the organism to be placed. And it will only be the component. You are not, you have not added any real content yet. So once you have the, completed the uh, layout, you add the media files, the real content, uh, the features, which will be certain functional uh, front-end functional integration. So this is a, another example on how templates and pages differ. So in the template, you could see we have the header navigation molecule, the article list organism, the filtering molecule, the footer organism, and together you have the template, as in the structure of the whole, uh, article list page. And once you add the content, you have the pages, which has the media files and the real content and that's how we develop the UI from an atomic layer to the pages layer. Now you might be wondering why do we need to uh, create the atoms separately, the molecules, the organisms uh, separately. The reason is uh, you, you might have faced in projects that you're working uh, that there will be some complex components. Sometimes an icon might have a whole way effect. It might have a separate focus. Uh, focus styling. So using these atomic uh, design methodologies, we can integrate those complex components and make it reusable. So it's therefore it's easy for us to create, easy for us to modify any changes, and it can be used throughout the site as a common component or as a reusable style. So this is more uh, focused on enhancing the communication between the designers and the developers. So we get the, we can like work on complex uh, UI integrations as well. So that's a simplified version of the atomic design methodology. And to use this atomic design methodology, we need to create the project. So we are using ReactJS or any project. We need to follow a certain uh, file structure. 
especially when it comes to the UI, we have to uh, maintain the CSS file structures. So for that, we'll be using the IT CSS file structure methodology. So this is where you organize all your CSS files in different layers. And I have given an uh, image of the inverted triangle where you can see from the top to bottom the different uh, CSS files we have. So another thing that we can note from this uh, triangle structure is the CSS file at the bottom. For example, the trumps can override the styles you have at the top layers. So that's why it is uh, developing an inverted triangle structure. And moving on to what each layer is. So you have the settings layer where you include global variables. So global variables would be your colors, your fonts. And by buttons, what we mean is like the button styles. So that's the variables that we will be using throughout the site, which is why it's at the top layer. Because that's been that is to be used as a global variable wherever you have calling the same value. And then we have the tools layer, which are mixins and helper functions to help make the site more responsive. And by helper functions, it is uh, more focused on if it is a mobile screen, sometimes you might have a different uh, functionality that you need to integrate. So you can have those styles in the tools to in the tools layer. In the generic layer, you have common styles and com uh, generic styles. So sometimes uh, we might want to change the padding for the entire P tag, like the paragraph tag. So you can give that kind of styles in the generic layer. So it will be applied throughout the web, uh, application. And then you have elements layer where you start creating styles, so def uh, overriding default styles. So you might be using frameworks like Bootstrap or Andy. So in the elements layer, you can start overriding the default styles you get from such frameworks and from such preprocessor classes. And then you have the objects. So in the objects layer, we have something called undecorated design styles. So this is when you want to uh, create styles for layouts. For example, uh, as I mentioned, grid system. So sometimes you might have to have a grid system with uh, four columns, with uh, three rows. So those kind of objects, uh, those styles would be included in the objects layer. And the components layer is where we merge with our atomic design. You have to create the styles that will be targeted to certain components, common components or reusable styles. So this is more specific to UI components that we're developing. So it can be for the atom or the molecule or for the organisms. And uh, so themes, this is not a, a layer that it's not part of the like mandatory uh, lay layout, but uh, you can have this layer when you have certain themes. For example, you might have projects where user type A might have a certain uh, UI theme, user type B might have a different UI theme. So in the themes layer, you can include those theme based styles and trumps is going to, it will act as our utility style. So through the trumps layer, you can override all the other classes that we have developed. For example, for a certain component, we target the ID and for that ID, we would change the style. So for that, we can use a trumps layer where we want to override the uh, styles in the previous layers. Another thing that we need to note is when it, come to, when it comes to IT CSS file structures, not all layers are mandatory. So this could change based on your project requirements. Sometimes you might not need themes or you might not need trumps. You might not need the objects, uh, sorry, the base layer. And so you'll be using components. So based on your project, sometimes the layers that will be used could differ. But this is the standard structure that we have for IT CSS file structures. So before moving on uh, to the next methodology, I would like to uh, demonstrate how we can create the project with Atomic Design and the ITCSS file structures. So when we are creating our project, there are three main folders we create within the SRC file, SRC folder. That would be the assets, the components, and the containers. So assets folder is mainly handled by the UI team, and the components and containers to be handled by UI and the front end. So within the assets folder, we have the CSS folder. And this is where we follow the IT CSS file structuring. So you can see we have the settings first. So within the settings, uh, since this is a sample project, I've just added a few lines of code as an example. So you have the variables that you would need, the color, 
and then we have the generic. So this is where I'm overriding some of the styles. So uh, I have given a margin zero for the p tag. So that means whenever I use a p tag within my application, I would not have a margin. So this is where I give those kind of like generic styles where I want to reset the default styles. And now we have three different folders. We have the components, the elements, and the objects. So if we go into the first layer, if, if you remember, that would be the elements. So inside elements, you have uh, styles like font, form elements, table elements, or typography. So this is where you create styles like uh, if it is a P tag, and if it has a certain uh, class or if it's a certain block, then we have to give it a separate style. So we can do that within the elements folder. So this is where you merge the generic and your stylings, but they're not, we are not still moved to the component level styles. But you have the various elements and this is, this sometimes might not be a mandatory layer, but it could be an additional layer if you have various styles to be generated with, uh, throughout the site. Then we have the objects layer. So here we have the object buttons, the uh, navigation. So these are like, uh, objects that we have to create and like how I mentioned in my styles they are grids maybe more based on the layout of your application and then we have components layer this is where we write the styles for our atomic components and atomic uh, elements for example I have an atom uh, which is the branding where I have the logo icon and the logo text so that styles is given within the components folder so you have the atoms and uh, you can also include the molecules. So this header is actually an organism and the header styles are within the header. .css. So here, this is where you integrate atomic design and your ITCSS file structures to create styles for different atoms, molecules and uh, organisms. Sometimes even for your templates and pages. That's uh, how you can integrate the ITCSS structure and the atomic design is where we move on to the components folder. So within the components folder, you have the atom, molecules, and organisms. And within the atoms, you can create your icons, your buttons, text fields, uh, typographies. So as an example, I can give, so I have created uh, the logo icon, the search icon as atoms. You can do this as one common file, or if you have, a, for example, if an icon has a lot of integration like front-end integration you can have it as a separate uh, js file as well and i would like to uh, give a small hint over here take a, a small note on the class name that i have given so these class names are different from from our usual naming conventions so i'll be talking about this as well and then we have the molecules so within the molecule you can see i have integrated my atomic component or atomic uh, element and within our organisms I have included, uh, included both molecules the branding and the search molecule so this is how you can uh, create your atomic layer your molecules layer and your organisms layer and within containers we have our template and our uh, pages layer so you can see we have the template we have the template here so we have the header and then we have the text. So I have not added any styles yet. So this is where I'm laying out my template. And later on, I can add my uh, styles or media files to it to convert it into a page. So this is the integration of atomic design and ITCSS file structure. And I mentioned about the style that I had given in the atomic layer, the class names. So this is something called BEM methodologies. So this is an example of the, uh, it's a similar class name that I had given and I'll be talking about each section of the class name. So BEM is actually block element modifier. So you can, uh, there are three parts to your class names and the reason why we're doing this is because it makes it easy for us to read through the class name, what's the style we are being, we're adding and also it's easy to maintain these styles. So the block is actually the parent tag or the uh, main scope in which you have uh, the, for example, you can see in here, I have the card element. So the card is the block because within the card, you have the element, the child aspects, which is the image, the description and the buttons. So that's the difference between the block and the element. You have the card as a block, the child components as the element 
and by modifier you can see one button is blue and the other is white so then it's a button click event that has changed the style of that button so there are certain uh, rules or practice best practices we follow when we are naming our block classes so they have to all be localized whether it's a, a block uh, element or modifier your class name should be in lowercase and uh, your block name can have two or more words but if you want to give more than one word you have to separate it with a dash for example user card is two words and it's separated with a dash in between and we can also have uh, nested block class names it does not it does not change how you write your css but just a concept is you have the header as a block and within that header you have the menu block the tab section is one sub block so you can name these separately and through the name itself you can get an idea understanding that it's a main div so this is an example of how you can write your block level uh, classes within your html structure so you can see i have the block icon and there's another thing I have added next to icon is icon double, uh, there are two hyphens and small. Since I don't got to that part, it might be confusing, but that is because I have added a modifier to my block. So you can add modifiers not only to your element, but to your block as well. So what happens is I have the main uh, classes in the icon class, but if I want to uh, make the icon smaller, the I sorry, the block smaller because of a certain maybe functional change or hover, I can give the uh, modifier as small and that modifier is added with two hyphens. So this is an example of a block level. So you have the product card and we have separated the two words with a dash. This is how you usually write it in the, in the CSS level because the previous example was an HTML example and this is a CSS example. Moving on to uh, elements, as I mentioned, element is uh, your child aspect within the block. And we have uh, four elements here. But you can get the same class. So how we do that is within the icon block, you create the class icon two underscores and i within the icon because we have the child uh, aspect over here, and we have given dot icon two underscores and i. So that is how you give the element class name. So the element class name will be with two uh, underscores, and if I want to add a modifier to the element level, it will be icon two underscores i two hyphens and I give the modifier name left. So uh, I explained before as well that a modifier is when you want to change the styles of an element of a block because of uh, appearance or because of your behavior in the site. So this would change during runtime. So after the button is clicked on it, the modifier class would be called. As an example, uh, you could see in the menu block, the tab three has been clicked and the styles have changed. So what we would do in that instance is for the element tab, we would give the modifier, you could say click or active. This is uh, another example, similar to the previous one that I have given. So you have the icon i element, and I have given a modifier of left hover. So that means when I'm hovering, the modifier class would change the styles of the icon. And I would like to run through this example as well. So this is a more in detail example of the block element and modifier level so you have the block product card and within the product card you have the element image which is indicated with two underscores and we, for the same block when it is being uh, when the button like is being clicked you have to add a border around it so what we have done is for the block we have added the modifier like with two hyphens and the like button color has changed it was white previously and it's blue now so we have uh, added the modifier like to the element level with two hyphens and the element is indicated with two underscores that's the same thing that i have done with my uh, class naming conventions so i think uh, just by looking at it now you will understand what what are the styles i've added so to the search block i have overridden that block with a few uh, different styles so as search i can div which is another block class that you can mention and i have given it a modifier search icon div hover so the hover is a modifier indicated with two hyphens and uh, within the element layer you have search uh, two underscores though it's not visible you have two underscores you have the element name icon and the modifier hover with two uh, hyphens 
this is uh, how you can integrate all the three methodologies atomic design itcss file structures and bea methodologies to your uh, speech as well yeah the reason why we do this is because uh, we sometimes face more complex uh, structures more complex ui elements and combining all three methodologies we can make sure that we handle these uh, complexities or the ui integrations in a more seamless manner so i think with that i can conclude my uh, tech talk based on the three uh, methodologies but i'm open for any questions uh, so amani what about you you know uh, this is like you know starting from scratch uh, uh, you know uh, development right ui development what if we uh, so is it, is it been uh, used by you know frameworks like and design or uh, you know uh, any other frameworks as well yeah we can use this with frameworks like and the bootstrap uh, even with tailwind uh, like when you're using those like you can use andy to create your templates so because andy already has components uh, like common components already built and the bootstrap so you can use them as within your template level sometimes even within your organizations uh, level and for the atomic level as well but you can override those styles through the itc css class structure that i mentioned you can override those styles in your uh, components layer or in your uh, trumps layer if you are creating a trumps layer you can override it there as well so we can integrate this with any ui framework not only andy or bootstrap so there are other frameworks we could use So you can use with that. Uh, but just small thing I want to mention is like if you are using Tailwind as your framework. So Tailwind is not about components, more about uh, they have class names that you could use instead of the components as class names. So you can use those class names within your uh, pages layer. That is within the within the uh, components we can use this Tailwind classes, and you can override those classes within your generic core components layer. Or uh, you can even add your custom classes alongside uh, Tailwind classes as well. So you can integrate them with various frameworks. Okay, Amani, that's clear. Thank you. I think we can uh, conclude the tech talk.